Amen. Thank God for humor <laughs> and a kind pastor. <laughs> Good morning, village. Good morning. How you feeling? Blessed. Yes. All right. All right. If you have your text with you, please join me in turning to the book of Luke, chapter 23. We'll be reading the verses 32 through 43. When you get there, please say something holy and acceptable. <laughs> I heard one amen. <laughs> huh? <laughs> No, 49 is not holy. <laughs> That's not holy. <laughs> There's no rocks in here, though. <laughs> they're not holy either. <laughs> I like them, but they're not holy either. Are we there? <laughs> huh? We can say something holy and acceptable. <laughs> That's what we can say. <laughs> Are we there yet? Yes. All right, all right. Luke 23, 32 through 43. Thank you. And it says, Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the skull, there they crucified him along with criminals, one on the right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. For they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching and rulers even sneered at him. They said he saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, the chosen one. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was written a notice above him which read, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? He said, since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me. When you come into your kingdom, Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Amen. 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 This text has several themes. The first one that really stood out to me was Jesus asking for forgiveness for them. Why would Jesus ask for forgiveness? For these people, they're crucifying. I, I, was, I, was, I was taken back, so I had to go in and study to really understand that. And what I understood is this. I came to this understanding. Jesus knew their hearts. He knew their hearts, and he knew that they had been tricked. They had been tricked by the schemes of the system of that day, by the world, had all tricked them and now they're living in a state of fantasy it's an evil state but it's a state of fantasy just the same okay forgiveness it seems at his weakest moment he's asking for forgiveness for others then you look into your text in Matthew chapter 5 I think verse 44 it says forgive those who persecute you and that made it clear to me because they've been tricked. They, too, are living in a fantasy, evil as it may be. It's a fantasy. My Lord. I don't care who you are, where you come from, wherever you've been. If you spend any time in this word, in this gospel, you're going to come across 
someone, a story, one of the characters in there that's doing something so desperately wrong, way out of line, way off the mark, outside of God's will. And they're going to look just like you and me. The Bible has a way of rebuking you, (laughs) has a way of straightening you out. That's what it does. That's what it's all about, see. Because when you're in that state of fantasy, you're caught up. That's, that's, that's the bottom line. You've been tricked. Mm-hmm. And I had to, it, it, it blew me away because I had to look up the word trick. Stop it. <laughs> we know about the one with the prostitute. We're not talking about that. We're talking. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> We're not talking about that. <laughs> and I had to look up Webster's definition of a trick. It says a crafty and underhanded scheme intended to deceive or cheat or a roguish or mischievous act. Tricked in a fantasy. Not just the thieves on the cross. Everyone else who's there, the rulers too, the soldiers, they've been tricked. Now they're all up on this hill. Text calls it the skull. In Matthew, it's called Golgotha. In Latin, it transfers, it's translated into cavalry. In Aramaic, it's transliterated into the skull. That's why we have the skull. That's why this text uses it. See, some of us believe that we're going to live wild and loose and reckless till we're old and gray. And then at the last minute, I'm on my deathbed. All right, Lord, come take me. I'm ready to, to do what you want me to do now. I'm ready. That's the fantasy we live in. We live in that fantasy. It's just like that airplane in the cartoon. The cartoon when the airplane's going down, it's, in, it's going down, it's on fire. It's about to crash. And just before it, start, it crashes, it stops. Uh-huh. The character Whoa. jumps out. He walk away. He walk away. That's a fantasy. <laughs> but some of us believe that. I believe that at one point in my life. I'm too young to be in church. I have no business being in church. I, I got a whole lot of life to live. <laughs> Wait a minute, not before I go to all them rules and jump through those hoops. <laughs> Hold on now, <now>, Pastor. <laughs> you know, that's what we believe. Then I came to church and there's children here all the time. But that's the mindset. That's the fantasy that we live in. That's a common fantasy. See, if you're in a fantasy like that, what happens when you're in that state is a fantasy begins to imitate love. Fantasy imitates faith. It imitates strength. It imitates truth. And before you know it, it's overlapped into your prayer life. And now those are the sins that we like to keep, you know, the ones we like to justify. As it says in James 1.1, we are deceived by our own evil desires and dragged away. It's, it, it, it's amazing. And it's sad, but it's true. See, you know about the seven-year itch? You guys heard that story? Hey, feels good to scratch your itch, don't it? But if you keep scratching, pain starts. Maybe even a rash. Hmm? (laughs) But you can't stop. The body's trying to heal. You want to scratch, but you know you shouldn't. But you can't because you're obsessed. And now it's idolatry. It's something else altogether. That's what happens. See, fantasy removes consequences and pain. Fantasy takes you back to the time when you were so-called loved and respected. When you had a whole lot of money. You had things going your way. Had a whole lot of money. You was a collar popper. Tag popper. When you saw me, I made you go to a swag doctor. (laughs) I made you sick. That's how we think. 
it takes you back to foolishness. Forget about those four years you did. Oh, forget, oh, I just got caught those expired tags. But they caught you dirty. See, we forget about those consequences. All that drama was attached to that so-called love and so-called esteem. We forgetting about that part. That's the, that's the sad part. That's the sad part. See, you forget about the fact that you exchanged the truth of God for created things. We forget about it. We forget about all of those things. See, the mind is just like the body. You got to understand that. I don't know how many of you have a scar on you, but if you have a scar on you, a prominent scar that can be seen, you know when and where it happened. And, and you, if you think about it well enough, you can imagine the pain, you can imagine all of that in a, in a split second. The mind is just like that. It has scars. And it will take you back to sin. And it will be out of control. You won't be able to deal with it. Unless you have Christ in your life to govern your thoughts. That's the only way we deal with it. That's the only way we get through. My Lord. That fantasy state is something else. Because what's happening with that scar, you're reliving it. We relive the sin over and over again. Your victim. Mm. You know, until it becomes reality. See, because if you think wrong too long, it won't be long before you're doing wrong. You can't think wrong and do right. It's only a matter of time. It's not going to happen. See, we got to understand that we brought it in. It wasn't the devil. We want to blame it on Satan. He did. No, we brought it in. We gave it glory. We gave it power. We gave it momentum. Mm -hmm. See, unlike that cartoon, uh -huh. we're subject to gravity. Uh -huh. When that plane is traveling at 600 miles an hour and you jump out, <laughs> you're traveling at 600 miles an hour too. <laughs> it ain't nothing nice. But that's what a fantasy will do. That's what it's all. The mind does that too. When you allow certain sins in your life to get up to speed they're hard to stop it's not just in physics a body in motion tends to stay in motion a body at rest tends to stay at rest that's in sin too you got to be careful about what you let in yes I'll, yeah I guess I will say this <laughs> I remember a time I was a young Christian, y'all. Y'all hear me? <laughs> I was young. I was taping a fight for my dad. That's how far it, that's how old it was. VCR. How many of you got VCR? So oh, long time ago. I was taping a fight for my dad. I fell asleep. You know, I fell asleep, you know, because you're not gonna stay up all night. Okay, I already seen it. I fell asleep. Woke up the next day, I'm being prompted. Look at the tape before you give it to your dad. Have a peek at it. Okay. I wait around. Wife was gone. Everybody gone. I look at the tape. Watch the fight. Tape's open. And uh, now it's a lady standing up in front of me with no clothes on. Good looking lady. You know, and I'm saying, well, okay, I'll turn it off. Let's see. I'll... That's enough. And he kept going. And then I said, well, it might be something educational. <laughs> <laughs> Bedroom is blessed. <laughs> oh, surely it's something I can use. <laughs> These are the tricks that you, t the lies that you tell yourself. That's a lie. I knew it was a lie, but I still watched it. It was all over. Felt bad. Say, I'm never gonna do that again. I'm sorry, Lord, forgive me, please, please. You know how you do, how we all do. That's what I was doing because I was by myself. No one else was there. Nobody else knew but me. I said, well, I can just deal with this. It's going to be fine. It wasn't fine. For the next three or four weeks, 
I was in torment. Those images was popping up in my head, in my mind. They were on my tongue. Whenever somebody said something, I had a quick little sexual rebuttal. Uh, and a voice said, you can't say that. But I was battling. I was struggling. Nobody knew I was a prisoner. In my own mind, in my own body, I'm a prisoner battling with these things. Until I had to confess it to some of my praying friends and let them know what I was going through. And I needed them to pray for me. And they prayed, and that is the only thing that removed it. Their Amen. prayer. Amen. The prayers. Because they had faith. Because I had faith. That's what it's all about. That's the difference between faith and fantasy. Amen. That's the difference. Faith breaks the chains of fantasy. Yeah. Of the yeah. sinful chains. Faith breaks those chains. That's what it says. Faith is an enabler, but only in Jesus Christ. Amen. Not faith in something else. Only in Jesus Christ. And that's what it says in John 8.36. I believe it's 8.34, between 34 and 36. Only the Son sets you free. Yeah. It's only Jesus who can free you. It's no other. That's what, Because the whole world is a prisoner of sin. Yeah. Yeah. Galatians 3.22. The world is a prisoner and there's only Christ who relieves us. See, that thief on the cross who hurled all those insults? At Jesus, he's in a fantasy. That's the difference between fantasy and faith. He's in a fantasy. He's using all of that game he didn't learned in the world, all of that stuff to try to get him down, to try to shame Jesus down. He's a king and he's on the cross. He's naked. What more shame can it be? He's doing all this to shame him. He's not going for Jesus didn't even respond to that clown. <laughs> he didn't do anything. That's why the other thief, who is now in faith, he's found faith. He rebukes him. A lot of us have been rebuked. Hmm? See, the rebuke is designed to turn you away from your sinful deeds and your sinful ways and reposition you and direct you in God's place and God's honor and God's desire and his perfect will. That's what it's all about. See, that's faith. He, the thief has faith. That's what it's all about. The thing is, through all of these trials, through all of this that has unfolded, only now, after all of his whole life, it comes down to this. Now he recognizes who Jesus is. He recognizes he's Christ. He's God. He's right. I'm wrong. That's what he does. He repents. He confesses his wrongs, accepting his just punishment and, 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 and claiming Christ's righteousness. Amen. That's what he does. How can we get some faith like that? How do we get faith like that? It's four ways to get faith like this. But the very first thing you got to know how to get faith like this, you must believe and know that Jesus Christ is God. That's, right. That's the first thing you got to know. You got to know that he's God. In John 10, 30, I and the Father are one. In John 20, 28, Thomas said, my Lord, my God. John 1, 1. In the beginning was a word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. John 2, he was with God in the beginning. And 14, you know, and the word became flesh. We got to know these things. We got to believe these things. In 1 John 5, 5. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes Jesus is the son of God. Amen. We got to know it. Yeah. We have to believe it. Number two. And how do we get that type of faith? Ask God to search your heart to reveal yes. any wicked ways. Yes. Amen. Psalm 139, 23 and 24. Ask God to search your heart because you're lying to yourself yes. sometimes. We lie to ourselves all the time. We do it all the time. That means we're lying to God too. Ask him to search you, to make it clear. That's what we got to do. We got to be honest. We got to be truthful. We have to worship in spirit and in truth. Amen? Amen. Number three, confess any sin. Confess it to Jesus. You married couples. <laughs> Don't start confessing to your significant other just yet. 
confess to Jesus first. Don't come in and say, well, out in the village, I heard him say, confess your sins. Baby, I want to tell you about, uh-uh. <laughs> Don't do that. Let the Lord tell you when to do that. He will design you. You follow him. He doesn't follow you. Confess your sins. Because in 1 John 1, 9, he will forgive us of our sins. He's faithful and he forgives us. That's what it's all about. Number four, claim Christ's righteousness to cover your sins and give you the right. And well, let me say that over. Claim Christ's righteousness to cover your sins and give you right standing yes. with him. Amen. That's what we have to do. Claim Christ's righteousness because it's his righteousness that makes us acceptable. It's his righteousness that makes it clear. That's what cleans us. His blood, his righteousness, not ours. We got to know that, Amen. ladies and gentlemen. Those are the four ways to believe. But we're talking about the other things that we're talking about, the, the, the thieves. But this is the greatest day in human history. We have no day greater than this. None. God's love is on display. Whoa. It's on display. He's opening up. The gates, the doors, the windows of heaven to receive us. He's taking the punishment that we deserve. That's what he's doing. See, he came to save us. He came down from heaven to get us. Yes, sir. Raggedy old me. He came to get me. He came to get us all and pull us up out of that nonsense. See, these two thieves give us a glimpse of our lives and all humanity pretty much in a nutshell. Those who have hard hearts and are tricked and believe that fantasy, they die with a hard heart. Mm -hmm. Those who believe Christ is God, they're saved. Yes, sir. Amen. That's what it's all about. They're saved. See, because we're all really dying. We're all dying. We're just breathing to death without Christ in our life. You're not living unless Christ is in your life. Amen. It's not happening. It's not taking place. See, what appeared to be a victory for the devil was a victory for Christ. Yes, sir. Because he has a way of upending the world's wisdom. Mm -hmm. He has a way of capsizing, overturning what the world thinks is smart, right, and true. Mm -hmm. See, that's what happens when you come up against an almighty God. Yes. You end up on the wrong side of justice. Yes. You end up on the wrong side of truth. Yes. You end up on the wrong side of right. Jesus Christ is right. We need to know that's where we need to be. That's how we need to go. See, because this thief here, he didn't know what was going to take place in the next three days. He didn't realize what was happening in the next three days. In the next, he didn't have a verse 46 Whoa. in his book. He didn't have a Bible to let him know. Huh? He breathed his last. In verse 53, he was buried, placed in a tomb. And in the next chapter, 24, 6, what did he say? He has risen. Yes. Amen. He has risen. That's what it's all about. He didn't have all of that in verse 37. It is I myself. Touch me. Jesus says, touch me to see that I'm real. I'm true. I'm not a fairy tale. I'm not an old story. I'm real. I was good then. I'm good now. And I'll be good tomorrow. I'm Jesus Christ. You need to know who he is. You need to accept him. You need to understand we got a pastor who's going to bring you in, who's going to teach you. He's going to meet you where you are. Thank God for a pastor like that, teaching classes the way he does. You think his class, his class is not tough now? He loves you. He teaches you because it's tough outside. It's tough in the world. And I was with him when he first started teaching. He was tougher than Tyson in the first round. <laughs> Tell you. <laughs> he was tough. <laughs> God has blessed him. Right now, he takes his time. He understands. He meets us where we are. That's what it's all about. Jesus meets you where you are. And the main thing, that one of the things that he really don't want you to do is like this thief. Don't wait. You don't have tomorrow. Yes, sir. You don't have the next breath. Right. Tomorrow's gone forever. Right. Yes, tomorrow is not promised. Excuse me. Yesterday is gone forever. All we have is right now. Yes. Yes, you can't wait. It's later than you think. Yes. It's later than you think, people. Pray for those who persecute us. We have to learn how to pray for them. We understand now that they've been tricked. 
We understand now that they live in a fantasy. We understand it better. That's why when they give their lives, you see them. They're broken. They're crying. Because they realize what they've been saved from. We realize what we're now going to be entered into. The goodness of God. Yes, Thank God. Yes, Thank sir. God. Know that Christ is God. And on this day, heaven was open to all who believe. It don't matter what you look like, what you've done. He has forgiven you when you believe in him. Amen. You're clean. Amen. You're brand new. Yes, sir. Come on into Christ. Yes, don't hesitate. Yes. Let me leave you with this. Because it's something that you need to know about when you come into the gospel of Christ. He tells you how to treat him and he tells you what he's going to do for you. And in Psalm 34, I think really describes it very well. And let me go. Let me read it for you. If we're not there. Psalm 34. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will be on my lips. My soul will boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I saw the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. He took those to, to those who look at him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes, sir. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Cut off the memory of them from the earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. A righteous man may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones, not one of them are broken. Evil will slay the wicked. The foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems his servant. No one will be condemned who takes refuge in him. Amen. 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 Be blessed. Let's be blessed.